to join us for the Living the Life broadcast on our series, Understanding the Goodness of God with Dr. Chooks Ugohe. To change it. Let me show you something. In Romans chapter 8. Hi. You know, before I show you Romans 8, the same principle. Jesus is in the wilderness at the beginning of his ministry. He had gone through 40 days of fasting. And the devil came to him. What did the devil say to him? I told you, when you are at a transition to your next level, Satan puts pressure on you. May, may, may you never key, no, may you never submit to the pressure of the enemy. When that pressure comes. The enemy came to Jesus. If you are the son of God, convert these stones into bread. That's what he said to him. Let's analyze it. If you are the son of God, convert these stones into bread. If you are the son of God. Meaning, if Jesus, remember he was hungry. If Jesus allowed his stomach to have pushed him, he would have allowed the enemy to make him do something. Hold on. If you are the son of God. So for him to obey, to try to turn stones into bread means he agreed that he's not the son of God. Can you see? So what, what was the enemy trying to do? To make him see himself as something that he's not. He is the son of God. That's what the devil does all the time. He tries to make you see yourself from different from the way God sees you. This is the reason why you need to be solidly established in the word of God. So that when the enemy puts pressure, he says, no, Satan, get behind me. I know who I am. I have been provided for by God. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And you stay with what God said you are. Sometimes our minds struggle. When your mind is struggling to hold on to the word of God, what do you do? Come on. What do you do? You open your mouth. Ah. You open your mouth and speak the word of God out of your mouth to control your mind. Did you hear what I just said? When you are under pressure to see it differently, the enemy is trying to show you you are broke, you are broke, you are broke, you are broke. Never allow the enemy to convince you you are broke because you are not. Listen to me. The best version of you is the version that has eaten the bread of life. Who is Jesus? Who is the word of God? The, the version that stays with the word of God is the best version of you. And let me say something to you. You need to listen to what I taught in the first service. And then you get this. That best version of you. Romans chapter 8. Let's go there. How much time do I have? <laughs> it's finished, eh? All right. Let me round up. Romans chapter 8, look at verse, let me read from 28 for good understanding. If you're there, say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. All right. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. To those who are the called according to his purpose. Verse 29, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be what? To be conformed. To the image of his. You are already predestined. To be conformed. To the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn. Among many brethren. Verse 30. Moreover whom he predestined. These he also called. How many people are called here? Everybody. Hallelujah. Somebody say I, I, I am inside that scripture. Aha. Uh -huh. Because he called you. That's why you're born again. That's why you, you answered the call for salvation and you got saved. Now he says, this he also called. Whom he called, this he also 
justified. Whom he justified, these he also. So you're already glorified. Meaning, you are exactly as the Jesus that rose from the dead. Ah. That's why scripture says, as he is, so are you. You are exactly as the glorified Christ. You are one with the glorified Christ. Somebody say, I am one with the glorified Christ. So, let me round this up. So, the glorified Christ is absolute wholeness. Somebody say, I am absolute wholeness. You, you got to say it to yourself until you believe it because it's true. You are in Christ Jesus. You are absolute wholeness. That Christ that came from the grave is who you are. That Christ that defeated death, defeated sin, that's you. Hallelujah. I said, that is you. That's why the Bible says, if you have been raised together with Christ, you have been raised with him, that's you. That's the best version of you. That's what God wants you to gravitate towards by the application of your faith. So, this risen Christ, amongst many things, is absolute wholeness. Let me give you what absolute wholeness means, and then I'll round up there. Absolute wholeness is wholeness in every dimension of life. Is what? Wholeness in every dimension. Remember, it is a state of no negativity in every dimension of life. Number one, physical wholeness. This is where your body does not have sickness in it. Also, your body does not have aging in it. Let me ask you a question. Did Jesus that came from the grave 2,000 Yes, plus. You think he's an old man? He's not aging. That's who you are. Hallelujah. You know that as we are now, the Bible says there is a man in the Trinity. The Bible says there's, there's one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. So there's a man in heaven. An immortal man representing you. Where he is. So as he is there, so are you now. You need to understand that. Physical wholeness. Number two, emotional wholeness. This is the ability to manage and understand your emotions. And cope with stress. And experience emotional balance and stability. Number three is mental wholeness. I'm rushing because my time is up. Number four is social wholeness. What is social wholeness? Social wholeness is when you have beneficial relationships around you. Where there are people around you who say you will never remain like this. And not only that they say it, they are willing to put everything on the line to make sure they help you become better. Remember that guy that his friends took, them, took him from the roof to where Jesus was preaching. His friends said, we will not allow this guy to remain like this. Do you know what brought his healing? It was his friend's faith, not his faith. Bible said, and when Jesus saw their faith, the faith of his friends, the man was healed. May God give you friends whose faith will get you out of wherever you are. That is social wholeness. May you be that kind of friend to another person that by your faith, somebody else will get to their destiny. Receive that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number five, spiritual wholeness. This is having state of peace, peace of mind, peace with God, intimacy with God, harmony with God. Number six is occupational wholeness. This is when you are in a job and in a work that it was meant for you and the work was meant for you and you were meant for the work. <laughs> Number seven, financial wholeness. Hallelujah. Financial what? There's a place of financial stability where you, uh, you are able to sort out your bills and have more than enough to give to other people. 
Now listen to me. All seven of them plus X is what I call absolute wholeness. God wants you to have all of them. Hallelujah. Your marriage is working. Your work is working. Your work with God is working. Your ministry is flourishing. Your health is flourishing. I thought somebody would be receiving what I'm declaring. In every area of your life, everything is working. Because that is the best version of you. Where everything is working. No negativity. Let me finish and close by this example. You know, in, 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 in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, there's a story of a, a wise poor man. Did you see that story? Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 15 and 16. A wise poor man. How can wisdom and poverty be in the same sentence? What was wrong with this man? How can, Bible say he delivered a city, but he remained poor. What was his problem? What was his problem? This man needed wholeness. He had wisdom, but he was broke. So when it comes to the issue of money, he didn't have financial wholeness. So when you have financial wholeness, your life all around is sweet and beautiful. You, are, you can never be a wise, poor man. So this man in Ecclesiastes needs this thing I'm preaching this morning. He needs to understand Absolute what? Hone. This is what God desires for you to have. Where everything in your life is working, nothing missing, nothing broken. Your marriage is working. Your children are doing well. Your work is working. Money is flowing like river. Come on, somebody receive what I'm prophesying today. This is, listen, this is the joy that is set before you. Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. For the joy that was set before him. This is the joy that God has set before all of us. But if you don't know it, you will not be able to gravitate towards it. So I want to ask you to stand up. We're going to pray. My time is up. God wants absolute wholeness in your life. God wants every area where the enemy is, is blocking you for those areas to open up. Lift your voice. Lift your hands to the Lord. Say, God, I receive absolute wholeness. I receive, I receive. And you know those areas where you are struggling, maybe your health, maybe your finances, maybe your relationships, Maybe your work, your, there's no fulfillment and joy in your work. This morning, I came with an anointing for absolute wholeness. You're going to press into it. You, 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 you are doing well in every area. This is the plan that God has for you. That's the joy that God has set before you. And you must, I must have what God has for me. I want you to lift your voice and lift your hands to the Lord and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive the grace for absolute wholeness. Pray that prayer in the name of Jesus. Zente de brokotosi enta da bahusi enta laka zibrotosi ente de brokotosha zente de brokotosi enta da hosha zeke brotosi enta da every pressure to see yourself differently from the way God sees you today in the name of Jesus in in any way Satan wants to corrupt the way you are in yourself. I say no. I see myself as blessed. I see myself as healed. I see myself as carrying the glory of God. I see myself as above sin. I consider myself dead to sin. I consider myself dead to poverty. Dead to sickness and disease. Dead to satanic attacks. 
I see myself risen with Christ in the mighty name of Jesus I want to pray scripture over you as I hand over the microphone in 2nd Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8 the Bible says 2nd Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8 and God is able to make all grace that's absolute wholeness not some grace not a few grace all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound in every good work that is absolute wholeness when all grace abounds towards you not some grace all grace pray that prayer right now i receive a revelation of all grace the grace for speed the grace for healing the grace for open doors the grace for taking territories the grace for a for a beautiful marriage all grace the grace for superlative prosperity the grace for speed for speed in growth all grace abounds towards me all grace abounds towards me Lift your hands, let me pray a hand over. I want to release an anointed for all grace to abound towards you. There will never be any insufficiency anymore in your life. No negativity. No insufficiency. All grace abounding not scantily abounding towards you that you have all sufficiency in all things father as you sent me i've delivered your word to your people i release an anointing right now for the overflow of all grace somebody say i receive the anointing for the overflow of all grace in the mighty name of Jesus for every area of my life I declare that I have sufficiency in all things at all times in the mighty name of Jesus I receive an overflow of the anointing of all grace I step into absolute wholeness now in the name of Jesus I release that anointing right now Amen. Father we thank you, Father, thank you. let it overflow in Jesus mighty name Amen there comes a time in your life when you need a change, an upgrade. You need upliftment. You need lasting results. You just want your life to be real. You need your life to be meaningful, deep, full, purposeful and easy. You're looking for enlargement, amplification, increase, strengthening. You're looking for growth in your life. You want leverage, strategic advantage, gain and favor, ability to influence clout and strength. Join us at Resurrection Life Church every Sunday. Visit our website reslife.org.za for more information. Make this year your year of being real. Embrace rapid enlargement and leverage. It is your time.